So recently I was coming across an issue running out of storage on my laptop, especially as I started to do more video editing. So I figured why not build a NAS or a network attached storage device using one of these guys. So this is an Odroid H2. Basically what the build is going to consist of is network attached storage software that you can put onto different hardware boxes. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a link aggregation between these two gigabit ethernet interfaces back to a managed switch and then what I'm going to be doing is setting up a RAID 1 configuration or a mirror configuration between the two SATA drives. So the FreeNAS system that I set up once I went through the installation on the Odroid H2 it'll, and you plug it into your network you will get an IP address via the console via DHCP. So my home router assigned a DHCP address of 192.168.10.38 so we'll go ahead and log in with the root account and I've already updated the password during the installation. All right, so the first thing you can be presented with is the, the dashboard page. So you can see just some statistics of the device here, the version of FreeNAS you're running, CPU, memory, and also I have my two ethernet interfaces here. And so the first thing we're gonna do is set up the link ag. So in order to do the link aggregation, go under network, go to interfaces, we're going to go ahead and add a new interface. Let's select the type, link aggregation. Let's go ahead and call it LAGG1. There is a special naming format you have to use. If you hit the question mark here, you can read the help that will show you that. And then as we scroll down, we're going to select LACP. And then we're going to select RE0 and 1 to be part of that lag. And then I'm also going to create a static IP address of 192.168.10.222. This static IP address that I've given it, it's outside of the DHCP scope of my home router, so we won't have any issues there. So we're gonna go ahead and hit apply, and it's gonna go ahead and ask you, do you wanna go ahead and apply them now? And we'll go ahead and say yes. And we're going to confirm, and we're gonna lose intermittent interconnectivity while those changes are being applied. However, while that's being done, we'll go into our switch and set up the LACP on the switch side. So the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and set up a new storage pool. So the way you do that is you go to storage and go to pools. And I have a pool created here already that's actually on the MVME drive. So I actually decided to install another drive um, via an EMMC module on the Odroid H2. So that's my solo pool. So I'm gonna go ahead and create another pool. So we're gonna hit create new pool. We're gonna go ahead and just call it, let's call it mirror pool. Use case sensitive, we're not gonna do any encryption. And then we could go ahead and select the two SSD uh, SATA drives and we're going to go ahead and use those and we're going to go ahead and make sure that it's set to mirror so the data is going to be when we copy the data to the share it's going to actually recreate a copy of that data to the other ssd drive so if one of these fails i'll be able to still access my data with just one drive so we'll go ahead and select that and we'll go ahead and hit create and yep, all the data on there is going to be erased, which is fine. Go ahead and create that pool. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually going to go ahead and create a new data set on that particular pool. So the data set is gonna be tied back to the share, the NFS share that we're gonna create. So I'll go ahead and give it a new name. So I'm gonna go ahead and call it uh, mirror share. So I have a mirror pool, I'm creating the data set mirror share. And let's go to advanced mode really quick and make sure there's no other settings or options that we want to change. Looks good. We'll go ahead and hit save. All right, so there we go. We have the, the pool created and then we have the data set. And then we can go ahead and look at the permissions. So I went ahead and created a, a user account that matches the user that I'm using within my uh, on my MacBook here. And so that user account is just called MacBook. So we're gonna go ahead and assign this data set rights to that particular account. We're gonna go ahead and give read write and we'll have execute as well. And we want to set permissions recursively. Let's see, traverse there, we'll also have that. So this is gonna apply permissions to all child data sets as well. And go ahead and hit save. 
All right, so now that we have that new share created, we're gonna go ahead and scroll down to sharing. And we're gonna go to NFS and we're gonna create a new NFS share. So we currently have one tied to the MVME drive that's tied back to the uh, data set and the pool for the MVME drive. Now we're gonna go ahead and reference our new pool that we created and our share. So we're gonna go ahead and select that. And let's just look at advanced mode really quick. And so let's go ahead and map again to the MacBook user and we're gonna want to allow the client to mount to any subdirectory. We don't wanna do read only because we actually wanna read and write, delete everything with this share and we'll go ahead and hit save. So now what we should be able to do is let's go to goal, connect to server and we're gonna go ahead and change this to our mirror pool and we're gonna say mirror share and there we go. So we now are connected to our NFS share. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I hope you have fun building your own free NAS system.